Palazzo del Bargello, the oldest civic monument and symbol of the city's freedom, stands in the ancient heart of Florence. During the 13th century, at the birth of the municipality of Florence, the city experienced the presence of new political leaders and places of power. The construction of the palace began in 1255. The building was the seat of the Podesta, whose coat of arms decorated the courtyard. The halls were used to host the Grand Council and to manage justice-related issues. The palace was also the place where the traitors of the municipality were judged, the place where Dante was sentenced to death in 1302 and then to exile. Bernardo Bandini Baroncelli was hanged from one of the windows of the palace after the Pazzi conspiracy in 1478. His dead body was portrayed by Leonardo da Vinci. The first central part of the building, which incorporates the Volognana Tower, evolved over time. The mighty stone facades, divided by horizontal frames, are crenellated with brackets and battlements. In addition, we find the majestic portico courtyard with round arches and cross vaults, supported by octagonal pillars. A staircase is placed on the west side. Built between 1347 and 1365, it is enhanced by a 16th century iron gate designed by Giuliano da Sangallo. The staircase leads to the balcony, embellished with ribbed vaults. Double and single lancet windows, decorated with marble, open onto the courtyard. The pictorial decoration currently visible is the result of the interventions performed in the mid-19th century. On the first floor, we find the most prestigious room, the Sala dell'Udienza, now called Salone di Donatello, which stands out creating visual effects between half pillars and Gothic elements. A large window illuminates the entire room. An elegant room leads to the Cappella del Podesta, Podesta Chapel, with a simple plan and barrel vault. It houses the frescoes by Giotto and his workshop. A majestic procession of blessed, among whom we find Dante, is radiated by the light of heaven. On the opposite side, we find the disturbing scenes of hell inspired by the comedy. The Medici family downsized the role of the Podesta, which was then eliminated in 1502. In 1574, with Cosimo I, the palace became the seat of the Bargello, the captain of the guards. For centuries, the building was used as a prison. The rooms were divided into cells, the arches of the courtyard were filled in, and the frescoes were whitewashed, shading those halls which had represented the testament of a glorious past. In 1840, the rediscovery of the chapel's frescoes began. Dante's portrait became a magnet for scholars until determining the future of the building. The palace thus regained its former glory. The infill walls were demolished. The frescoes were cleared and the rooms redecorated according to the neo-Gothic style. In 1865, the palace became the first national museum in Italy. It enshrines priceless masterpieces of sculpture, collections of ivories, weapons and decorative arts. Important donations came from collectors such as Jean-Baptiste Caron. Architecture and art come together to tell us about one of the brightest periods in history. Here, the works of Donatello, Michelangelo, Cellini, Giambologna and many others are enhanced by a building that is itself a treasure of the past. Between 2020 and 2021, a new methodical restoration revealed the beauty of the facades, the courtyard, the rooms, 
The structure of the tower stands out, with the wind vane and the bronze bell, the Montanina. For centuries, its toll has called the people to arms and has marked the executions and the night curfew. Today, the bell rarely tolls during extraordinary events important for the city. The coat of arms of the Podesta and of the tower, as well as the decorations of the windows obscured by time, were recovered. The whiteness of the capitals of the double lancet windows now blooms again. We can now appreciate the work of the architects, the efforts of the workers, the craftsmen at work, their design. Each stone encapsulates a life, an art forgotten, a skillful work offered to the glorification of power. Palazzo del Bargello, Florence's treasure chest of art and one of the highest expressions of the culture of humanity, finally returns to shine.